Lord will have to be whole. God, they have to be whole. Yes, Lord. Lord, do what you want to do the remainder of this revival. And God, move us from faith to faith, glory to glory, strength to strength. And God's exactly what you're doing. I love you, Father, and I appreciate all your precious people. Lord, your leaders, Father, strengthen them and encourage them in this hour, God. Help them, Lord, to stand and withstand the wiles of the enemy. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Lord, this great army that you have. Lord, help them, Lord. Help us all to stand shoulder to shoulder. God, not leave one behind. But God, Lord, if the devil takes one on, he takes us all on. Oh, Yabai, Yabai. Lord, in your precious holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can have your seats. Holy Lamb of God. I seen today where they passed in the Supreme Court that no Muslim could be sworn into office on the Quran. God is here in his church. God is here in us. And he's turning upon their heads what they meant. The evil that they have done. God is turning it upon their heads. He's going to continue to do it as well. Hallelujah. You know why? Because we're going to keep praying. We're going to keep fasting and and digging in his word Amen. and believing and having faith yes. that God is going to do exactly what he says he will do. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I serve a God that is alive and well. Thank you, Jesus. The world says he's dead, but he's alive and well. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I know many churches have their services tonight. And I know there'll be some more on later. But I tell you what, I, we're getting it. What God's got for us, aren't we? Amen. Hallelujah. I want everything. Everything he has. For me. And for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to turn to set Mark chapter 13. You know, when God is a moving, the devil goes to messing. <laughs> oh, but I tell you what, God always steps in, don't he? Hallelujah. And he gives us what we need in this hour. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. You know, in 2000, no, it wasn't. It was back in 1990, uh, I believe is what it was. I had a tumor in my stomach. And I knew it was cancerous. And I was working the third shift at that time. And I would come in, the kids would get on, they were teenagers, get on the bus and go to school. And then I would go into prayer before I laid down to rest. And I was laying up on my bed and I was just praying, crying out to God. Hallelujah. And I mean, there was a cloud, a thick mist come in my room. And I mean, it was a beautiful cloud, like a silver lining. And out of that silver lining, a hand come out. It went into my stomach, and I felt the hand of God slip underneath that tumor. And that tumor was resting right in his hand. And when he closed his hand upon it, hallelujah, that thing dissolved. Amen. Let me tell you something. God is our healer. Amen. By his stripes we are healed. Amen. All he wants us to do is to believe. Have faith. Amen. If we have faith and believe, there is nothing in your body that God cannot get rid of. Amen. Nothing. Amen. He wants to cleanse us inside and out. Yes, Lord. And he's wanting to take us. 
Hallelujah. In a deeper measure. Hallelujah. Amen. That he can help us get there. Amen. I want to get there, don't you? Amen. He's going to have a clean bride. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I had a vision just uh, last year. And in this vision, I might have told this already, I don't know. But I know some haven't heard it. And in this vision, I saw a young, beautiful young girl. And she was clothed just in a straight, shift-tight, white, beautiful garment. It was so sparkling. It's so good to see everybody here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, y'all just bless my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she was barefooted. And I mean, she was just playing with her toes up and down in that beautiful crystal clear river. And I mean, she was just so happy. And next thing I know, she started walking forward. Never getting out of that crystal river. Hallelujah. And as she walked, and as she started running, she went from one age to the other until she was full adulthood. And each time God, hallelujah, perfected her garment, until at the end, she was running as his bride, hallelujah, to meet the groom. And she was dressed in pure crystal white gown. Because she never left that water. Never left that river. See, that's what God's wanting us to do. Never leave his river. Never get outside of it. Because when you do, you're getting in deception. But if we'll stay within the river of God, Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he will move you from one step to the next. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I tell you what I said, God, don't ever let me step out of this beautiful crystal river. Yes, I said, God, keep me in there. Yes, Lord. And change me, Father. Transform me. Hallelujah. To the vessel, Lord, that you can use. Meet for the master's use. That he can receive glory. See, that's what God's wanting to do. He's wanting to purify us uh, and bring us to a place uh, that he can glorify himself within us. Amen. And that's what God's going to do in this last day. He's going to glorify himself in his people. Just like he glorified himself in his son, Jesus. Amen. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray ask the disciples to tarry with him but yet they couldn't they fell asleep the church has fell asleep God is telling us to tarry and I tell you what when he got in that garden of Gethsemane he knew what he was fixing to face in the flesh he knew the pain that he was going to go through because of that cat of nine tails had those blades on it Hallelujah. He knew that every strike, 39 strikes, uh, it would rip his flesh to pieces. Isaiah says, Vesture was marred more than any man. And in history, biblical history, you can read where his insides hung out. Because they tore his flesh in such a manner. See, Jesus knew what he was fixing to walk through. And his flesh part wanted to draw back. And he got in that garden of Gethsemane and he prayed till it sweat to come great drops of blood. Yeah, yeah. And then Jesus, God sent some angels to comfort him and to give him strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus went to Peter again, he told him just to sleep on because he didn't got the strength that he needed. Well, we need God in our hour. God is wanting you just to go to Him and pray and seek Him. And He will send angels to comfort you. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll bring them to you. You better believe He will. Amen. God don't change. Amen. God never changes. Hallelujah. He wants His people to step up and have faith. I'm going to start reading. Set Mark chapter 13. I hope you've got it. I hope you've got all your Bibles out there in live stream. 
Hallelujah. Some of these services I've had 650 views on them at one time while it was going live. Some of them less, some of them more. And some of them have already got close to a thousand views. And they're listening in other countries and they're listening here. All over. Hallelujah. God is doing a mighty work in this hour. All we got to do is be willing and obedient. If we're willing and obedient to Him, what the Bible say? We would eat the good of the land, wouldn't it? Amen. Well, that's what God's wanting to give unto His people. He wants us to eat the good of the land. Amen. But if you walk in deception and double around, devil around, and Jezebel's doctrines, you're corrupting yourself. You know when the Lord told me, he said, my daughter, you will only preach my truth. I have ministers that get upset at me because I won't preach man-made doctrines. And I will not. He said, my daughter, the Lord spoke to me. He said, you preach my word and it is written. Do not add to it and do not take away. And I said, Lord, I won't. Hallelujah. That's what his leaders got to get back to. Hallelujah. And get out of all this junk. Because it's doing nothing but cor corrupting the spirit. Paul said, I have corrupted no man. That's because he only preached truth. Oh, his apostles, they taught and they built the church upon his foundation. Jesus' foundation. If we ain't built upon his foundation, I'm telling you, you will crumble and you will fall. But I'm telling you, uh, no other foundation can be laid. Uh, I don't lay any foundation, uh, but the foundation of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We all know that we're living in the latter days. We can see it by the signs in the skies. And we can see it with the evil that has covered our land. We can see it how the enemy has come in and filtrated within our government to overthrow us. But God is saying, wake up church. Pray, seek my face. Return back unto me. Return back to your first love. Amen. And depart from iniquity. And he said, whew, you know, like 2 Chronicles 7, 14 tells us whew, that if we would humble ourselves unto him, cry unto him, repent, turn from our iniquity, that he would heal our land. I'll tell you what, I ain't going to stop. I am going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep pushing. Hallelujah. Lord, I, I shared with you and told you that the Lord said I'd found such favor. When he woke me up just a few months ago and told me, he said, my daughter, they are doing things behind the scene and they're just about to step out and overthrow the government here in America. He said, if you get my people to wake up, he said, I will stop this thing. And I started crying out to the people. I said, we have got to pray and seek God and stand in the gap and make up the hatch. That God will help us and give us more time. And God done exactly like And he's working for us right now. Why? Enough is waking up. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, he's going to start bringing them in from the highways and hedges and totally transforming their lives. And they're going to start standing in the gap too. They're going to be completely sold out to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, this new crop that God is bringing in. They're going to be totally sold out to Him. Glory. And the Lord gave me a choice. He said, my daughter, you can let it go on like it is. And I'll make a way for you to move to another nation that's safe. He said, you have found great favor with me. Ain't no pat on my back. Hallelujah. But God found favor with me. I said, Lord, no. 
I can't do that. I got family. Lord, they'll perish. Believe me, what was just about to take place, the Muslims would have ripped you to pieces. They would have killed your children, your wives and your husbands. They would have raped the women, your daughters. And if they didn't accept Allah, then they would have killed them, killed everybody that wouldn't accept Allah. I'm telling you, Allah is not my God. Amen. They can chop my head off. But I'll never accept any other God but my God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. When I said, Lord, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to help try to stand in the gap and make up the hedge that our country does not go under. I said, God, we need more time to get this gospel out to all nations. Jezebel has went Compare season lands to make twofold child of the devil more than herself. But that ain't the true gospel. The true gospel. The Lord is raising up an army now that's going to go all over this earth. Hallelujah. Carrying Jesus and him crucified. Hallelujah. Preaching a word that will spring deliverance. Hallelujah. This word is what brings deliverance by his anointing. Yes. I tell you, I don't come to you with my words. I come to you with the words of Jesus. I don't come to you and tell you what I believe and what I feel. No, I'm bringing you the word of God because he said, my daughter, he said, if you carry my words and speak thus, saith God, he said, I will move for you Amen. and I will confirm my words and he has signs and wonders follows this ministry he confirms his word not me he confirms his word last time I was in Kenya God moved with so many signs and wonders he delivered in a mighty and powerful way. Amen. Preaching at one church. They had the door open. We was going every day, every day, from church to church. Reminds you of the apostles in the book of Acts where they went from one church to the other. They went from one house to the other. Preaching Jesus. And I mean, he was filthy. His clothes were nothing but rags. And he was walking back and forth. And I knew he was being demon possessed. But I knew that this word was reaching way down and pulling him. And by the time I got through preaching, he come in. And I've got pictures of it too. You can see the anguish in that man's face. You can see how he was tormented. And I took, they took pictures too for me. And you could see the glory of the Lord upon his face. Afterwards, God totally did, set him free Amen. from all demons that he had. He had many demons in him. Glory. He come in and he told the pastor, tell that woman that I have voices that talk to me and I need deliverance. And I didn't feel no fear whatsoever. I said, bring him here. Amen. Hallelujah. We laid hands on him. I tell you what, that devil at first tried to resist. But I tell you what, he left yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. That man was delivered. Yes. Baptized in Jesus' name, full Amen. with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now he's in leadership in that church today. Amen. Woo! Don't tell me that my God ain't real. And don't tell me his name, Jesus, does not deliver. I've seen it too much. You need to say his name in whatever language is your language. Because you know why? The devil knows his name in every language. 
And God is not trying to carry his church back into Judaism. Get out of that mess. God is wanting to bring the Christian Jews and us into a greater measure to prepare us for his coming. To cleanse us, to wash us. And the only way he can do that is get all false doctrine out of our hearts and our spirits. Man made doctrines and traditions of men. We've got to get it out. I've been praying for years, Lord, empty me out. I don't want anything in my spirit, in my heart, but you, Jesus, and your word in truth. Church, we got to turn back to the love of the truth. Amen. Too many have turned away from the love of the truth. We have got to love truth once again. Amen. Church, stop listening to all these Jezebel preachers Amen. on the TV. Amen. Now, there's some real, but they're few. There's only a few. But there's still children of God in the ministry. Still sharing them. They might have started out right, but they have allowed their self to be pulled in to Jezebel doctrine. And I'll tell you what, the what is the cry? I heard it back in the 70s. Come out of her, my people. Be not a partaker of her sins. If you do not, all her plagues is going to come upon you. I've heard many say, oh, Jesus wouldn't do that. He stands by his word. I don't care what you believe. If you don't line up with this word of God, you're in deception. The Bible said if you're not, if you're a hearer of the word and not a doer, he said you deceive your own self. Nobody else is deceiving you. You're deceiving your own self. Starting at verse 5. And Jesus answered them and began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Heed means earnestly take note. Because there's many deceivers that have went out through the land. I seen back years ago when I did watch TVN some. And there was a man walking around interviewing different ones on the street. He come up to a pimp. He said, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, yes, I do. I repeated a prayer. Now I am covered by grace. He said, but you're still out here pimping. Prostituting women. He said, oh, that don't matter. I'm covered by grace. Amen. It don't matter what I'm doing. That is a lie from the very pits of hell. Right. Yes, it does matter. If Jesus is in your heart and life, he transforms you. Amen. When you get down at the foot of the cross, and you softly repent of your sins. You get up. It cleanses you by his blood. Washes you clean. And then you get up as a new creature. You leave that old man. That old flesh. Deeds of that old man. You leave it laying at the cross. And then what? He places your feet. Upon his path of righteousness. Trees is important to get under good leadership. So they can help you. Find your way. You're a novice. Many of them, they have a zeal, boy. They, they have a zeal. They're so full. <laughs> they just been saved. Pulled out of the pit, out of the clay. And now they want to run and tell everybody about Jesus. Which is good. But yet they need for a period of time set under leadership. And gain wisdom how to run. Amen. You know Paul said. I do not want to be one that beateth at the air. He said I want every strike to be short. 
that every stronghold is pulled down. Hallelujah. He said, that's why I deny my flesh. That's why I bring my flesh under subjection. Or I, or I will bring, make myself a castaway. Children of God, we got to bring this flesh under subjection to the Spirit of God. And let Him cleanse us up. For many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. Isn't that happening every day? There was in one in Florida saying he was Jesus reincarnated. I had a multitude, I mean a multitude following that man. And he had them go tattoo 666 on their skin. And those people gave everything they had to that man, made him wealthy. But it's the blind leading the blind. They're both falling into the ditch. But God's raising up an army that's going to go for them. They're not going to fear for their life. Amen. Here or abroad. I walk, walk under the divine protection of the Lord. Amen. Here and abroad. Amen. Hallelujah. And there's many more countries I've got to go into. In God's time and His season. And I don't want to go until it is. Because I'm telling you, you're facing some things out there you better be ready for. Amen. That's the reason I tell people, this ministry faces much demonic. They've been coming under the tent here. God started something new in the ministry. I've been telling them, I said, look into my eyes. Because the eyes are the window of the soul. I could see those devils in there. I ain't scared of them either. The Lord told me there wasn't a devil in heaven or hell. Not heaven and hell, but earth or hell that could stand up against the power that he has put in me. I believe him. And it's true. In that night there that God sobered up that alcoholic and he stood right there and I prayed for him. God broke some chains off of him. But there was one devil in there God told me to hold up on. He said, my daughter, you set him free from that. He said, if he goes on, does not get completely right with me. He said, there will be seven. He said, there will be a worse demon come and take him and be seven more demons worse than that. Well, take him over. He'll be worse than what he started off with. Leaders are got to start using wisdom. When God puts that in your life, use wisdom with it. That's one reason these demons have got pretty powerful. Besides, the angels of darkness that was set loose from the very pit of hell. The Lord took me to hell. He showed me the very pit of hell. I was standing there with him. And he said, my daughter, he said, the chains of darkness are upon The angels of darkness is going to be set loose for this end time. He said, you tell my people they got to be sealed. If they're not sealed, he said, they will take them at will. And he has let them loose. That's why you see the evil upon the land that you see. That is why the darkness has covered the land and gross darkness to people. And that's why you see young children that's not covered by prayer. The Lord said that the people that are sealed, if they would pray for their young children, and cover them by the blood that he would protect them from these spirits and demons. You better start praying for your children every day. Please the blood of Jesus over their heart, their mind, their body, and their soul. That's why you're seeing young people killing people in the school. Never done anything wrong. It's because these spirits are taking them at will. 
and telling them. They even told the news. A voice told me to go do this. And they could not help it. That's why you see seeing some deacons in the church killing their whole families because they're playing church. And these demons are taking them at will. There was one de a deacon shot and killed his whole family and then killed himself. The neighbor said, he's a deacon of our church. This man ain't never done anything. What in the world took place? I'm telling you what took place. You better stop playing church. You better make sure that you are completely sealed in God. Or these demonic spirits are going to take a hold of you and you'll be killing your own seed. People better wake up. God's not playing. He is not playing. I heard a prophecy from Brother John Matters. And that prophecy was powerful. And God had spoke to me along the same lines. And in that prophecy, it said, my people. 